Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwebron.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the latest Dubfest ROM onto your Pixel 6a. Do note that this will wipe off all the data from your phone, so please take a backup beforehand. Likewise, you should be on the latest Android 13 build. If you are on the Android 13 June feature drop or the Android 14 beta build, I would recommend you to use the Android Flash tool and be on the latest stable build of Android 13. Once that is done, Let's get started with the step. So first and foremost, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ID binary given by Google and is required to execute ADV command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction in eDrive as you could see. You could extract them to any location on your PC. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADV command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, you have to go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So now go to system and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get an RSC key fingerprint prompt as well. So make sure to tap on allow in that as well. Once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. So for that, go to the platform tools folder, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside platform tools folder as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting an ID, you, you should be getting an RSA key fingerprint prompt. So tap on allow and with this debugging is now enabled. So let's once again verify the connection to type in ADB devices and make sure that you are now getting a serial ID and the device keyword. If that is not the case, then disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone. Unplug and replug your phone from the PC and use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting this ID. Once you are getting this ID, let's now proceed ahead to the next step. So next step, you now have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that this will wipe off all the data from your phone and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide to unlock the bootloader. In short, you have to boot your phone to fastboot mode and then use the fastboot flashing unlock command. After that, you will get a screen in which you have to use the volume keys to select the unlock the bootloader option and press the power key to confirm. Once you press the power key to confirm, the bootloader will be unlocked. So as you could see, first off, you have to boot your phone to fastboot mode via ADB, reboot bootloader. I'll show you that as well. So type in this command and your phone will boot to fastboot mode. Once you are in the fastboot mode, you then have to type in fastboot flashing unlock. And now you will get a screen something like this. So bring the power volume key to bring up the unlock the bootloader option and then press the power key to confirm. Your phone will undergo a reset and upon undergoing a reset, the bootloader will be unlocked. Once the bootloader is unlocked, boot your phone to the system and make sure to re-enable USB debugging. In my case, I have already unlocked the bootloader as you could see from here under OEM unlocking is showing as bootloader is already unlocked. So likewise, make sure to re-enable debugging as well. Once that is done, let's now move ahead to the next step. So next step, you now have to download the DOFS ROM. You could grab hold of the ROM file from here and once you have got the ROM, it will be in a zip format. So make sure to extract the ROM from the zip and once you extract the ROM, you will get the following files. Out of this, we just need the payload.bin file and we need to extract the boot and the vendor boot file from the payload.bin file. So for that, we need to use the passboot enhance tool. So I have linked this tool in my guide. You could refer to my guide and download and extract the passboot enhance tool from here. So let me show you this is the tool. And then copy the payload.bin file which you have got from the custom ROM from the DOFS ROM and simply paste the payload.bin file inside the passboot enhance folder. Once that is done, let's now extract the boot and vendor boot files from this payload.bin. So double click to launch the passboot enhance tool and it will take a few seconds to launch. Once that is done, go to payload dumper, then click on browse and now you have to choose the payload.bin file and click on open. The file will now be loaded onto the tool. Now go to partitions and select the boot as well as the vendor boot. So select the boot, hit the control key and choose the vendor boot. Once both these files have been selected, 
just click on extract image and choose the location so let's just choose the desktop so click on ok and it will now extract the boot and render boot file onto your desktop and the process will only take a few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead so as of now it's extracting the file we could also do the extraction using the python command but that is complicated and that will end up extracting all the file whereas using this tool you could simply extract, extract the individual file as well so with this we have got the operation complete message and we have got the boot and vendor boot file so let's verify the same so go to your desktop and as you could see just a minute we should have got the boot and the vendor boot files both are here so copy both this file and then place both this file inside the platform this folder on your pc so just to repeat up until now we have unlocked the bootloader then we have downloaded the rom then we extracted the rom and got the payload.bin file from the rom file and then we downloaded and extracted the fastboot enhanced tool and then we extracted the boot and vendor boot file from the payload.bin file using the fastboot enhanced tool and now we have placed both the vendor boot and the boot file inside the platform tool folder so now we'll have to boot our phone to fastboot mode and then flash both these files as well as the rom file as well so for that get hold of the rom zip file so just a minute let me verify the rom zip file so this is the rom zip file this time we want the entire zip file and not the extracted file so copy the rom zip file and place it inside the platform tool folder as well so as of now the rom zip file the boot.img and vendor boot.img all these three files should be placed inside the platform tool folder once that is done we will now flash the boot the vendor boot then we'll boot our phone to the vendor boot or the custom recovery and then we will do a adb side load of the custom rom so with that said let's get started first and foremost you have to boot your phone to fast boot mode just make sure that debugging is enabled if that's well and good let's now boot our phone to fast boot mode so open cmd window inside platform tool folder and now type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and with this your phone should now boot to the fast boot mode and it will only take a few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and after that we will then verify the fastboot connection as well so our phone is now booted to the fastboot mode so just to repeat as you could see under device state it's shown as unlocked so this signifies that the bootloader is now unlocked onto our phone so if that's well and good you now have to type in fastboot devices and hit enter make sure you're getting a serial id if you're not getting any id then you will have to install fastboot drivers onto your phone so you could refer to my guide i have linked the guide in the description so refer to my guide and or you could refer to this link as well and install the fastboot drivers once you have installed the fastboot drivers use the windows x shortcut keys and choose device manager now you have to expand the android phone section and under android phone make sure your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface as you could see from here so this as well as the serial id over here signifies that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we could now move ahead with the flashing steps. So first off we have to flash the boot IMG file and then we are flashing the vendor boot file. So you could simply copy paste the command from here. Just make sure that the name of the file is boot.img and is placed inside the platform tool folder. If that's well and good, simply paste the command in the CMD window and then hit enter and it will now flash the boot IMG file onto your phone and the flashing is now done likewise make sure that the vendor underscore boot dot img file is there in the platform folder as well if that's well and good simply copy this command as well and then place the paste the command in the cmd window to flash it so let's now flash the vendor boot as well for the unaware the vendor boot file contains the, the custom recovery of this phone so let's now boot our phone to the custom recovery for that type in fast boot reboot recovery and hit enter and with this your phone should now reboot to the custom recovery so it will only take a few seconds for that to happen so let's just wait for the time frame and then we will move ahead with the next step so it will be an aosp based recovery let me show you so as you could see we are in the dove face recovery is based on aosp so first and foremost let's move ahead to the next step and now you will have to do a format data do note that this will wipe off all the data from your phone so make sure you have taken a backup beforehand 
Once you have done so, select factory reset, then choose format data factory reset and select format data. Your phone will undergo a format and it will take a few seconds. As you could see, we are now getting a data wipe complete message. So this signifies that the format data is now complete and we could now sideload the custom ROM. For sideloading the ROM, first off, go back, then select install update and select ADB sideload. With this, your phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. So open CMD window and type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure it's showing as a sideload keyword. This signifies your phone is now in the sideload mode. Now for the ease of convenience, let's rename the ROM file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. So it will now be easier to type in the CMD window. So now open CMD window and just type in ADB sideload and name of the file which is ROM.zip and hit enter. The sideloading will now start and it will first verify the update package and the process should take only a few seconds. So if you are getting a message something like this, such as logical partitions are mapped, please reboot recovery before installing an OTA update. So that's not an issue. All you have to do is just type in ADB reboot recovery and hit enter. So if you are getting this message, then go to advance and select reboot to recovery. So your phone should now reboot to the DOFS recovery and it will take only a few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead. So our phone should now reboot to the DOFS recovery and we will then move ahead to the next step. So we are now in the DOFS recovery. So once again, go to install update and select ADB side load. And now let's open the CMD window inside the platform code folder and now just type in ADB side ADB devices and make sure you are getting the sideload keyword as you could see. Now type in adb sideload and the name of the file which is rom.zip and hit enter. So the sideloading should now begin and as you could see, let me focus it. So as you could see the flashing has now started and the flashing could take around 6 to 7 minutes. In the meantime, let me repeat the process. So in short, first off we unlock the bootloader. After that, we grab hold of the ROM file. Initially, once you download the ROM file, you will get a ROM file in a zip format. So you will have to extract the ROM file. So right click on it and select extract all. Upon doing an extraction, you will get a ROM file in an extracted format. So once you have done the extraction, go to this folder and copy the payload.bin file. Then download the fastboot enhanced tool from my guide and extract this tool onto your PC. Now you have to place the payload.bin file of the custom ROM inside the fastboot enhanced tool as you can see this is the file here now launch the fastboot enhanced tool and now you have to load the payload.bin file inside the fastboot enhanced tool and then simply extract the boot and the vendor boot file to anywhere on your pc in my case i did that session in the desktop now you have to copy both this file and paste it inside the platform tools folder as you can see this is the vendor boot and the boot file Apart from that, you also have to copy the ROM zip file, the initial ROM zip file, and then place the ROM zip file. This is the initial ROM zip file. So copy this and place it inside the platform to folder as well. So as you could see, the ROM file, the boot file, and the vendor boot, all the three files should be in the platform code folder. Once that is done, you have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. Then first of flash the boot file, then flash the vendor boot file, and then use all the the command for flashing is given in my guide. So use the fastboot flash boot boot.img and then fastboot flash vendor boot vendor boot.img. Once you flash both this file, you will now have to boot your phone to the recovery mode. So type in fastboot reboot recovery and your phone will now boot to the DOFS recovery. Once that is done, you will now have to do a format data. So select the factory reset format data option. And once that is done, you have to go to advance and select reboot to recovery. If you don't do so, then you will not be able to do an ADB side load. So after formatting the data, you will have to select advance and then select reboot to recovery. You cannot do ADB reboot recovery because that command will not work. So you will have to do a reboot to re recovery using the advance option only. So go to advance and select reboot to recovery and your phone will 
then once again reboot to the dopphase recovery once it boots to the dopphase recovery you could then do the adb side load rom dot zip file and this time around the side loading will now start as you could see from here the side loading has now started and the entire process will take up to around 6 to 7 minutes so let's just wait for the time frame and then we will be back so guys as you could see the flashing is now complete in the cmd window you will get the total transfer 1 and 2 and on your phone as well you should get the install completed once that is done you could now reboot your phone to the system so just tap on reboot to system and your phone should now boot to the newly installed os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take a few additional seconds this is because it will load all the google app packages and frameworks likewise the os has been set up from scratch so the first boot up could take a few additional seconds from the subsequent boot up it will not take that much longer so just wait for a few seconds at the very max it should take around a minute or so and currently as you could see it's the dove press boot animation so let's just wait for a few additional seconds and then we will proceed ahead as of now i'll skip the initial setup screen and take you to the os and after that i'll also plan to route this from via magisk and then show you the steps to pass the safety net test as well so let's carry out both this task in the same video itself so as to save you valuable time so let's first check out the rom and then we will route the rom via magisk and then we'll pass the safety net test as well so the entire process will take only a few seconds so let's just wait for the phone to boot up and then we will move ahead with the next step as i've told you before only the first boot up will take a few extra seconds or minutes from the subsequent time you will not face that much delay so let's just wait for a boot up to complete and then we will proceed ahead you don't have to interact with your phone during this time frame just leave it in this state and it will automatically boot and as you could see the first boot animation is now complete and we should now boot to the os as i have told you initially i'll be skipping the initial setup screen and take you to the os so let's just wait for the setup screen to boot up and then we'll proceed ahead this is the boot load so doing a system ui restart makes it work so if in case you get stuck at the setup screen just long press the power button and select system ui it will restart the system ui and then you could proceed with the setup screen that's just a normal hiccup and nothing else to worry about so if you want you could connect to the wi-fi and set up your phone right away i will not be doing to, doing so right now i will do that later on it's completely up to you so let's just wait for a phone to boot up and then we'll proceed ahead So I'll be skipping and setting up the phone offline because I don't want any apps or data resolution as of now. If you want, you could restore everything right now. It's completely up to you. So with this, we are now in the Dofus ROMs. As you could see from here, the only initial issue which I faced was that during the setup screen, it, no setup option was available. So I just had to do a system UI restart. Apart from that, there was no issue as such. So once that is done, let's now check out the settings, settings icon from here. And the USB of this ROM is a section known as Dove Space. Let me check out. So as you could see, this is the Dove Space. And from here, you could custom, customize the battery settings. Then we have the clock settings. Then is the status bar items from here. And then these are the traffic indicators. Then some miscellaneous tweaks from here. And this is just a beginning. Next up, we have the quick setting panel notification styles and the quick setting toggles from here. The animation speed. Then we have the lock screen UI. You could tweak from here. And next up is the lock screen shortcuts and then ambient always on display tweaks. Then the last one is the system where is the general settings, Android P animation styles. Then there are a few customization UI. So you could choose from various UI options. So these definitely looks quite intriguing. And this one was nice. So there are quite a lot of customization tweaks. And let me go ahead with project Optronics. The blue one looked nice. 
you could also choose a solar eyes this has become a new ui trend so or let me go with this only then the next up we have the headline body font so as you could see this is a transparent ui style which might conflict with some of these themes if you want so here are a few themes let's check out the style as well so vibrant expressive this looks nice and then you could tweak the background color as well then we have the headline and body font in other words the font style there are quite a lot of fonts even the oneplus and the nothing font style is also there what about this nothing one no this one much better so you could pick the font style from here and then you have quite a lot of icon packs so let's choose the oxygen os style icon packs then we have the wi-fi icon style so let's choose the zigzag you might also get this icon style from the you might be aware of an aosp mod which you could flash on a rooted pixel stock rom as well so you could also try out that and these are the icon shapes so let's select anyone for example pebble and these are the pebble style icon pack so guys you could now test out this rom and try out these things from here customization option and next one is the pulse so navigation bar pulse lock screen pulse so these are mostly the audio music visualizer if you play any music then it will mirror and the pulse will light up but that said guys this was the first half of this video next up i will now show you how to route this from via magic and then we'll pass the check in a test as well so let's proceed ahead with the next step so let's now route our phone via magic so regarding the route you might be aware there are three methods the first one is by simply by side loading the magic zip via the custom recovery which in our case is the dofus recovery unfortunately you cannot side load the dofus magic zip file via dofus because it will not work so the next one is using the pwrp but as you might be aware our phone does not have a pwrp recovery so we cannot use this method as well so we have no choice but to opt for the universal approach which is also the most lendes approach this involves extracting the bootloader img patching it via magisk and flashing it via fastboot command so let's now carry out this method as well Be before that let me first show you my phone is currently not rooted so for that i could be using a few apps just a minute let me copy a few apps i will give you a link of all these apps as well let me first copy all if your phone is not visible on your pc select charging this device and choose file transfer and with this your phone will be now visible i will explain to you the need of all this app and give you the link of all this app as well as and when the need need comes so just wait for a few seconds and I'll, then i'll explain you all the usage of all these apps as well so first off i will now install the root checker app and i'll show you that my phone is currently not rooted via magic so let me show you that so let's open the files app and let me access the root folder as per, as far as the root checker app is concerned you can install this app from play store so let me now install this app and it will take only a few seconds to install once that is done let's launch it and tap on agree then let's get started and now tap on verify root as you could see my phone is running pixel 6a the latest dofus from android 13 and it's not rooted so let's now root our phone so if you have used my guide to flash this from you might be aware that we have extracted the boot or img file using the fastboot enhance tool we have already done this task however if you have used any other guide then just to repeat you have to download and extract the fastboot enhance tool onto your pc over here then you also have to download the dofus rom and once you have got the rom you have to extract the rom onto your pc once you extract the rom you will get a couple of files including the payload.bin file let me show you this is the payload.bin file so copy this file and paste this file inside the fastboot enhance tool folder then launch the fastboot enhance tool and load the payload.bin file then select the boot.img click on extract image and extract this image onto your pc once you have done the extraction onto your pc you will now have to transfer this file onto your phone so let's not do the transfer if your phone is not visible here then simply expand this and select usb file transfer from here so with this your phone should now be visible onto your pc so let's now transfer the 
stop the boot IMG file of the custom ROM onto our PC. So this is the boot IMG file. Let's transfer it here. So as of now, we only need the boot IMG file. We don't need the Binder boot. So ignore that. We will just be using the boot IMG file. Once we have got this file, you will also now need to have the Magisk app onto your phone. So let's do that as well. So you could go to my guide and as of now, first off, let's re-enable USB debugging onto your phone. So go to the settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. This will enable developer option onto your phone. As you could see, so now go to system. You should now see developer option, go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone, tap on OK. And with this, debugging is now enabled. You will get an RSA key fingerprint prompt, tap on allow. Next up, you also have to download the Android SDK platform tools. If you haven't done so, so download it from here and extract them onto your PC. Anywhere will do. So let me show you the content of that folder. So this is the platform tools folder. Just a minute. As you can see over here, we have got this file. So once that is done, you will now have to extract the boot IMG file, which we have already done using the fastboot enhanced tool. After that, you have to transfer the boot IMG file onto your phone. We have also done that. So now you have to install the Magisk app onto your phone. So refer to my guide and at the time of recording, the latest build is Magisk version 26.1. So just go to the table of content section, select the latest version from here, and you could either use the direct official download link or verify the change log from here and then download the APK file onto your phone. Once you have transferred the Magisk APK file and the boot IMG file, let's first install the Magisk APK file onto your phone. So launch the Files Manager app and now simply install the Magisk APK file onto your phone. So let's select the Magisk APK and tap on install. The app will now be installed. It will take only a few seconds. So now tap on open and hit allow. Now tap on install next to Magisk. Then select and patch a file. And now you have to choose the boot IMG file which you have extracted using the fastboot enhanced folder of the same ROM which is currently installed onto our phone. So select the boot IMG file and now tap on let's go. Magisk will now patch the boot IMG file and the patch file is now placed inside the download folder. So let's access the download folder from our PC itself. It will be easier that way. So on so onto your phone, onto your PC, access your phone, go to internal storage. Then go to downloads and as you could see, we have got the Magisk patch file. Make sure to verify the file name as well. The file name ends with du-d2u6m and it's the same file over here. So copy the Magisk patch file and place the patch file inside the platform tooth folder onto your PC. So with this, we have got the patch file and we will now have to boot our phone using this patch file. So for that, first off, you have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. So let's open a new CMD window. Let me close existing CMD window. So type in CMD in the platform to footer address bar and hit enter. And with this, we have got the CMD inside the platform to folder. Now type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And this will boot your phone to the fast boot mode. It will take a few seconds. In the meantime, I will recommend you to rename the file to something more meaningful. So let me just rename the file to Magis patch, Magis underscore patch, underscore boot, and the complete name becomes Magis underscore patch underscore boot dot img. So with this, we are now in the fast boot mode. Just type in fast boot devices and hit enter and make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fast boot drivers. I have already given the link of the fast boot drivers guide. Refer to my guide and install the drivers. Once that is done, you will now have to temporarily boot your phone using this Magis patch file. So just type in fastboot boot and the name of the file which is magisk underscore patch underscore boot dot img and hit enter and your phone will not temporarily boot using this magisk patch file. Do keep in mind that you should always boot the file and never flash it because if you end up flashing the magisk patch file and if something is wrong with the patch file then your phone might end up in a soft break or a bootloop state. On the other hand, if you are just using the boot command and if something is wrong with the magic patch file, then you just have to do a simple restart and your phone will be back to the OS. There will be no data loss and no issue as such. So always use the fast boot boot command to boot your phone to the rooted OS. As of now, our phone will be just rooted for one time usage. 
so we would all have to make the root permanent that's not a cause of any concern let's not make the root permanent as well but to be on the safer side always use the boot command and never use the flash command so with that said let's now wait for a phone to boot to the os it should only take a few more seconds and then we'll proceed ahead with the routing steps so let's just wait for the time frame and our phone should subsequently boot to the rooted os and as i told you before our phone should be rooted just for one time usage we will now make the root permanent so let's just wait for the boot up as opposed to other custom rom i am noticing that it's taking a little bit longer when it comes to the boot up of this custom rom it might be just a slight issue but there is definitely some somewhat slower with that said you now have to launch the magisk app so let's launch the magisk app and once you do so it might take a few seconds to load so let's just wait so it's now launched the magisk app and although our phone is now rooted now but it's just rooted for one time usage so we'll now have to make the root permanent so tap on install next to magisk and now select direct install recommended and tap on let's go so with this it will now patch and flash the boot img file and the process will take only a few more seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and it's now flashing the new boot img file and after that once then you just have to tap on reboot so our phone should now reboot to the rooted os and this time around our we should have obtained root we'll also verify the process and let's check the result as before if you are seeing a subsequent delay in every boot up then in that case i will recommend you to do a format data i know it's quite effort taking and time taking but that is the only way out if you are facing subsequent delay after every boot up so in that case you have no other choice but to do a format data or wait for the next ota update and that should fix the issue so with that said let's now wait for a phone to boot up and it should now boot in a matter of few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame sorry for this so let's just wait and our phone should now boot in a matter of few seconds so as you could see in my case i am witnessing a slight delay in every boot up that's just a issue of either the cache partition or the data is not somewhat loaded correctly so in all those cases you could either boot your phone to the recovery mode and do a format data from there or boot your phone to fast boot mode and then use the fast boot dash w command and both of these will remove all the data from your phone anyways with that said let's now launch the magic scab and check out the result it might ask for an additional dependency so it's not asking so with this we have obtained root permanently and we could now proceed ahead to verify the root status as well so let's now run, launch the root checker app you will install this app from play store and now tap on verify root as you could see we have now got the magic prompt so with this we have obtained root as you could see now and let me show you from here as well so if i launch the magic app and go to the super user tab you could see it's now obtained root so guys with this our phone is now rooted we have rooted the dev face from but as you might be aware upon rooting the safety net will be tripped so both the cts profile and basic integrity test will now fail as a result of this you will not be able to use any banking and payment app likewise wideband d1 l1 certification will be downgraded to l3 and you will not be able to watch any drm content in full hd so to fix all this issue you have to pass the safety net test as well so let's now do that task as well first and foremost let me show you show you that my phone is failing both this test for that i will be using the yasnak app you can install that app from play store so let me go to internal storage and you can install the app from play store the name of the app is yasnak so safety net checker app yet another safety net registration checker so install this app and make sure you are online because it performs a test using internet connection so make sure you are online and now install the app it will take only a few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and once the app has been installed we will then launch the app and then proceed ahead so let's just open this app and make sure you are online and tap on run safety net registration so as you could see let's just wait a minute as of now our phone should be failing both this test which is the basic integrity 
and CTS profile match both are failing. So now our ultimate aim will be to pass both this test. With that in mind, let's get started. So first and foremost, you have to hide the Magisk app. So launch the Magisk app. Let's bring the app to the home screen. Launch the Magisk app. Tap on the settings icon. Then tap on hide the Magisk app. So let's just tap on that and enable the toggle next to allow from the source. Then go back and now you have to rename the Magisk app to anything else of your choice. I am renaming it to Droidwin. You could give it any name of your choice. So let's rename it to Droidwin and tap on OK. It will now hide the Magisk app and rename it to Droidwin. Both the app name and the app icon will be removed. I'll show you that as well. So it will now ask for the shortcut. I don't want a shortcut, so I'm tapping on cancel. So as of now, you could see the Magisk app is removed and the icon is also not there. From now onwards, in my case, the Droidwin app will be my new Magisk app. So once that is done, you will now have to en enable the systemless host module. So launch the Magisk app, tap on the settings icon, then tap on systemless host and the module will be added. So go back, go to module and as you can see the module has now been added. Next step you now have to enable Zygis onto your phone. So as of now you could see it's showing no next to Zygis. So we will now have to enable Zygis. So go to the settings menu of Magis, then enable the toggle next to Zygis and it's asking for a re reboot. We will not do a restart now. We will do a restart after flashing a module. So download the module from here and place the module onto your phone. Once that is done, let's now flash this module. So launch the Magisk app, go to modules, tap on install from storage. And now you have to select the Sertinel Netflix module. So let me choose that module. So this is the module selected and tap on OK. The module will now be flashed. Once that is done, just tap on reboot at the bottom right. And with this, the module will now be up and running and likewise the safety net module will be up and running and likewise apart from that the digest will be enabled as well so let's just wait for the phone to boot up and then i'll show you that as well once that is done we will then move ahead to the next step only a few more steps are remaining and then we'll have passed the test so let me wait for the phone to boot to the os do keep in mind that while you're carrying out these steps while you're flashing the module or when you are flashing the magic file boot mg file the boot up might take up a few seconds additional delay that's completely normal and nothing to worry about it's just happening while the time you are flashing the module or flashing the patch boot file or enabling zygis so you might witness a delay of few seconds that's not an issue but if you're having delay after every step then you might have to do a format data once or remove the cache from the Cache partition. So, with that said, our phone should now boot to the OS. So, let's just wait for a time frame and it should now boot to the OS in a matter of few seconds. So, let's wait for that and then we'll proceed ahead with the next step. So, this ROM is definitely showing a few hang ups every now and then. I guess a format data should rectify it. Anyways, moving on. Now launch the Magisk app. And you have to go to module section. As you could see, both the modules are now up and running. Likewise, the Zygisk has now also been enabled. Once that is done, you will now have to configure the Magisk deny list, which was earlier known as Magisk hide. So go to the settings menu. And now enable the toggle next to enforce deny list. And now tap on configure deny list. You will now have to hide the root from the following three apps and the fourth app if it's there in this ROM. So first and foremost, tap on the overflow icon and check mark show system apps. So first off, let's hide the root from the Google Play service. So let me search for the Google Play service. So expand the Play service and enable the toggle next to all the services as you could see from here. Next up, do the same for Google Play Store. Expand it and enable the toggle next to all the services. Then we have the Google service framework. So let me search for the framework app as well. So enable the toggle next to all the services and now let's search for the Google Play Protect service. It's only there on some ROM. Let me check if it's there in this ROM or not. So this app is not there on this ROM. So you have to hide the root from Play Service Play Store and Play Service Framework. After that, you have to hide the root from the banking and payment app of your choice. Once that is done, you will now have to remove the data of all these apps so let's do that as well so go to the settings menu then you have to go to apps 
then you have to go see all apps tap on the off icon and select show system first off let's search for the play service so go to google play service storage and cache manage space delete and with this we have removed the data next up is the google play store so search for the play store app so search for play store and you have, then go to storage and cache then clear storage tap on delete next up is the service framework so let's search for the services framework app as well so go there storage and cache tap on clear storage tap on delete after that you now have to remove the data of the banking and payment app of your choice once that is done you now have to restart your phone this restart is compulsory so restart to the os don't restart the ui rather you have to restart the entire os so just tap on restart and your phone should now reboot to the os and with this we should now have passed the safety net test and we could then use all the banking and payment app and the drm app as well but before verifying the result i'll show you a ui bug it's important to know that there exists a bug although that bug will not be a cause of any concern but still let's make you aware of that bug as well so let's just wait for the phone to boot to the os and then i'll show you that bug and after that we will then check out the test result using the yasnac app so after the boot animation as well you might have to wait for around 10 to 15 seconds for a phone to boot up so let's just wait for a few more seconds and then we'll proceed ahead with the next step so let's just wait for a few more seconds and then first i'll show you the ui bug and then we will check out the status as well so our phone should now subsequently boot to the os in a matter of few seconds so let's just wait for a few more seconds for a phone to boot i have linked all the guides in the video de description you could refer to my guide the flashing of the dofs rom the routing of the dofs rom as well as the passing of the safety net test all these three guides are there in the de description you could refer to the description and get hold of all these guides as and when required with that said if you now launch the magisk app and go to the settings menu then from there if you now go to the configured deny list you could see from here that the google service framework is unchecked and the google play service is missing from this list both of these things are just a ui bug in the front end it's just a ui bug in the back end everything is working normally so it's nothing to worry about simply ignore this bug with that said let's now launch the yasnac app and make sure you are online and now tap on run safety net at a station so let's now verify the result as well so it will take only a few seconds and as you could see we are now passing both this test so here we are passing the test likewise our phone is now rooted by magis as you could see from here our phone is now rooted and we are now also passing the safety net test so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regard to flashing the dofs storm rooting it by magis or passing the safety net test do leave it down in the comment section and please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching